Uh, to Nick Abraham for your welcome to country, it's greatly appreciated. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the custodians of the Wajak Nunam, which are past and present. Thank you. Good evening to you and good evening to everyone and welcome to tonight's celebration of community presenter touring and shows on the go. It's really lovely to see some familiar faces and um, to see some years kind of uh, like memories spread across the room. It's really lovely. In case you missed it, uh, in June this year, the Minister for the Arts, the Honourable David Templeman, announced the transition of the Shows on the Go program to Circuit West. Then you would have seen the video of a conversation between Paul from Regional Arts WA and Ryan from Circuit West, talking about the evolution of community presenter touring and the new place it will inhabit in the touring spectrum. This is a really exciting development. I am Philippa Morn. I am the last in a line of managers of performing arts touring at Regional Arts WA, formerly Country Arts WA. I feel like the final Doctor Who. <laughs> I would like to acknowledge our current board, headed by Professor Ted Snell, and chairs and members of previous boards, and of the board subcommittee, the Touring Assistance Panel. Previous CEOs of Country Arts WA, Andrea Taman, Andy Farrant, Jessica Machen, and Regional Arts WA's current CEO, Paul McPhail. I acknowledge also the previous managers of the Community Presented Touring Program, some of whom are here tonight and some of whom are interstate. Jackie Allen, Jenny Simpson, Rick Heath, Ian Greve, and Katie Harford and also former touring officers and assistants, Annette Carmichael, Julie Luxton Covoyo, Karina Lauder McBurney, Simon O'Leary, Sarah Valliviello, Monique Boucher, Carla Steele, Caitlin Chessel, Hannah Chambers, Samantha Humble, Louise Madden, Julie Cornut, Rosemary Lenzo, Liz Marsh, Catherine Gravel, and Kate Larson. There are also a number of on-road tour managers with us. Hmm, 76 tours. <laughs> one of whom you will hear from later, and also many other former Country Arts WA and current Regional Arts WA staff who have provided support to the program. There are presenters who have presented many of the 76 shows on the GOES tour, although we are struggling to remember the first one that they did, um, and producers and artists who have created and developed and delivered the performances. I'd also like to acknowledge the management committee of Circuit West and the team led by the indefatigable Ryan Taff. Welcome to long-term funding and sponsor partners Lottery West, Healthway, GWN7, Hertz and Culture and the Arts, DLGSC and its many former incarnations. And finally, I acknowledge Pinnacle producers, presenters and People's Pinnacle awardees recognised by Circuit West for their contribution to touring 2019 to 2021. It's a lot of people, and it's a lot of roles. Touring is an ensemble project, and all of those people are supported by volunteers, organisations, bosses, audiences, funding bodies and communities. It's the jung jungle gym of presenting. Tonight you'll hear from Man Markey and on-road tour manager David Marshall, a community presenter, and, and you'll have performances from two of the artists we have toured all part of the jungle gym. Tour coordination is a job you learn on the job. When I told a friend about my new role in 2007, she rather languidly told me, oh, that's good, you'll get that under your belt in 12 to 18 months, and then you can move on to the next thing. I can only assume she thought touring meant booking accommodation and arranging cars. It's so much more. It's about learning the personality of a community, what they'll turn out for, how they'll put an event together. And when a community is presenting for the first time, it's about discovering with them what works for their town and how and when they can be invited to expand into more challenging performances. I've never been convinced there is such a thing as a geographic touring circuit. Touring circuits depend on the personalities of whole communities and the style and energy of the production to be toured. And even though it's the same performance, the pre presenter, producer and tour coordinator 
work to create a show that is different in every town as each community puts its own spin on the event and the audiences react in their own way. Possibly the hardest thing of being a tour coordinator, ironically, is when the tour hits the road. After having spent months helping presenters imagine an enriching community gathering, ensuring tech will flex with each town hall, rec centre and amphitheatre, dealing with last minute venue changes because the Shire won't have the performance on the newly varnished floor of the rec centre, <laughs> Working around the local footy fixtures, the farming season, the cyclone season, and thinking about every waking and indeed sleeping hour of the touring party's days, weeks, and sometimes months. Waving goodbye to the touring party brings excitement and relief and a slight sense of loss. Excitement levels are high. The cast and crew want to hear where they'll be touring and who they'll be meeting. They may or may not hear you tell them that in some communities, only donger accommodation is available. <laughs> and in many places, shops shut, shut at 5 p.m. And vegan and vegetarian cast members <laughs> really need to plan ahead. <laughs> then the on-road tour manager takes over and the tour party becomes a tight-knit travelling and performing unit. And now it's between the artists and the audiences. At this point, being a tour coordinator is about encouraging, cajoling, troubleshooting and condoling. We receive updates from the road. Huge crowd, lots of involvement. Quieter audience tonight, but everyone stayed to chat afterwards. And phone calls at unexpected times. Uh, the local dry cleaners burned down overnight with the band's costumes inside. <laughs> The performer has just headed off to the hospital with a metal shaving in their eye. We've blown two tyres on the van and the wheel rims are buckled so the, dram the van is undrivable and it can't be left unattended because in this remoter location, an abandoned car is a one-stop spare parts shop. <laughs> and we live for the feedback and the comments book. We loved it. My grandmother loved it. Because of the show, my child wasn't bullied again that week. My child wants you to come back. Wicked shows, thanks for the laughs, getting some good serious info through to the boys. So wonderful to experience these talented people. Leaves you feeling young at heart. Thank you for the memory. And the highest compliment an artist reported when a child told him, that totally didn't suck. <laughs> Presenter-driven touring was part of the offerings of Country Arts WA when the organisation was formed by the merging of the Arts Council WA and the Office for Performing Arts Touring Information Office organisation, or PATIO, in 1994. It has taken many forms and included shows on the go, WAPAC or Circuit West touring, major organisations touring, schools and national touring. Sometimes those programmes have morphed into something different, some have been handed to other organisations. Please do have a flip through the folios of tour posters spread around the courtyard. Shows in the Go has always been about providing performing arts activity to regional communities of all sizes. The community organisations vote for what they want to see toured, pay a performance fee and organise local presentation and marketing activities. It is set up so that performances can happen in pretty much any venue in any location and has travelled the length, breadth and width of the state. I want to note particularly 2004, when the then touring team toured Nabalek Band from Western Arnhem Land, a band of nine traditional young new men performing contemporary music influenced by their homeland. Check out the documentary, Nabalek on Tour. It plays regularly on SBS. With percussion group Tetrified and the Mary G Show in the same year, they can truly be said to have toured the width of the state travelling to remote First Nations communities, including the Western Desert region at the border with NT and South Australia, and discovering an unmet need with audiences travelling hundreds of kilometres to see the performances. This was a watershed moment for the program, for it demonstrated an underserviced audience living in remote communities. After it happened again in 2008, we created Sandtracks, a dedicated program touring First Nation artists to First Nations communities in the central desert region of WA. 2005 saw the first large-scale 
scale tour to the Christmas in Cocos Keeling Islands, and in 2007, Chosen to Go was part of the department's Disability Arts Inclusion Initiative with a partnership with National Disability Services to increase regional access to the companion card. Previously, having promoted the health messages of Quit Smoking and Smoke Free WA, the Healthway health message became Act Belong Commit in 2014. We were very proud to promote this message and it was applicable to all ages and all members of communities. It could be adapted from an activity with children building contraptions with Jens Alzheimer's squaring the wheel to a conversation about music and storytelling for people with PTSD with Fred Smith's beautiful Dust of Vura's Gun. In 2016, we initiated the Presenter Development Program, bringing community presenters to a peer network meeting before joining Circuit West WA's showcase. This morphed into the Tech Degustation Tour, where a day was spent looking at different technical elements of presenting in differently configured venues and meeting and sharing with other community presenters. 2018, the program was renamed Lottery West Shows on the Go when Lottery West became the largest funder. And in 2021, at a meeting on the 23rd of September, a USB stick of templates, presenter lists, evaluations, and community personalities was handed over to Circuit West to evolve and develop the program further. To be a tour coordinator, a presenter, an artist, is often to be a worrier sometimes an insomniac. How can I ask this community to present on a Monday night when I promised them a Friday last time they took a Tuesday? <laughs> and it's okay, no one ever pre-purchased tickets. They always buy at the door on the night, it's okay. And I know they'll love us, but will they really love us? Have I omitted, have I omitted to invite or forgotten to acknowledge anyone in a function recognising the people who've contributed to 27 years of a touring program? Those were pre-2020 worries, of course. For an industry where the show goes up on time, the prospect of cancelling whole tours and seasons was an act of heresy. COVID-19 was outside anybody's experience. With tours weeks away from going on the road, it brought with it the heartbreaking task of trashing months of work. Turns out it's surprisingly fast to cancel a tour certainly much faster than rescheduling it in our partially vaccinated world. And telling not only communities there won't be a show, but artists and tour managers that a solid chunk of work and income has now disappeared, felt like an act of vandalism. 2020 and 2021 have been difficult for everyone. For the performing arts to whom our nation turns when we are sad and frustrated. The inability to comfort to perform and to plan with certainty has created an identity crisis that continues to hum uncomfortably along the nerves. The prolonged anxiety of advocating relief grant writing, tentatively raising and disappointing expectations, planning for disruptions that when they come are in a new unanticipated form, even the emotional intensity of succeeding during this time is taking its toll on members of the normally can-do sector. It was particularly telling doing the tour briefing for the twice rescheduled tour of the Family Shoveler Band from Broome to the Christmas and Cocos Islands this year. Whilst outlining the measures in place to respond to a COVID emergency, a senior member of the band asked if he was safe travelling from Broome to Perth to the islands and back again. Despite all the, mes despite all the measures, and all the COVID clauses in all the contracts, I could not guarantee his safety or that he would not transmit COVID-19 to his family. At that moment, I wasn't even sure we had the moral right to ask him to tour. Regional Arts WA supports the Vax the Nation campaign. Next up will be a montage of photos of past tours with the music of Tiwi Island Band B2M, that's Bathurst Island to Melville Island in the Tiwi Islands, and Narbalek. B2M toured in 2015 and one of their tour highlights was described in a tweet from the band. Just did a workshop in Ravensthorpe, 
black fellas giving a music workshop to white fellas. It went great. Reconciliation, B2M home. <laughs> After that, you'll hear from Man Markey, who we've asked to be the honorary tour manager for the evening and introduce Yuck Circus. Yuck Circus was the final shows on the go tour for Regional Arts WA, touring in April this year after being COVID cancelled in 2020. A West Australian production company, Yuck Champions, the female voice across live performance. They come from regional, remote and isolated towns from all corners of Australia, including founder and director Georgia Deguara, who commenced her circus career with Sand Fly Circus in Broome. Yuck Circus, not just throwing around women's issues, they're <laughs> literally throwing women. <laughs> it was a pretty awesome tour to finish with. And finally, I was honoured with the People's Pinnacle Award by Circuit West last year for making an outstanding contribution to the development of the West Australian performing arts sector. As you can see, this is not something done by one person in one point of time. It is an ensemble of players over many years that makes magical experiences happen. And so whilst it was me on the stage accepting the award last October, all the people that I've talked about tonight were standing beside me. Thank you.